One, two, three. What is up, Watch Fam? Happy Saturday. I am Christian from Theo and Harris, and welcome to this week's Ask TNH Live. Uh, we're jumping in uh, to these live questions on Instagram right now. If you don't follow us already, go ahead and do so on Instagram at Theo and Harris. Uh, and let's do it. Let's answer some live Watch Geek questions. All right, before we get into it, a uh, quick wristwatch check. I am wearing a sick Rolex Datejust reference 1601 with a lemon Buckley dial. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, le uh, Buckley dials are painted Roman dials. I think they were made between, I know most of them from the 70s and then into the early 80s, but they may also be 60s watches too. Probably 60s, 70s, maybe early 80s as well. Uh, but they're painted Roman numeral dials. They are named after... Uh, a watch kind of like New York legend, this guy, Buckley, uh, cool guy. I've actually had the opportunity to meet him, and he signed a, an autograph uh, because I'm a big Buckley Dial fan. So um, that's it. I actually done that for a couple of clients with him. So that's it. All right, let's get into uh, the topics at hand today. Um, okay, so let's talk about the Hodinki Lauren Ferrier watch. Uh, Hodinki released uh, a, a, a travel time, um, you know, Laurent Ferrier. Uh, Laurent Ferrier is a brand, is a person uh, that Hodinki and Ben Clymer have, you know, have adored for as long as I've been following Hodinki. The first day I met Ben, which was three years ago, Jesus Christ, three years ago, I met Ben for the first time, and uh, he was wearing a steel Laurent Ferrier. Uh, so this is not a new relationship. Uh, and I think it's amazing that Ben Clymer, the CEO of Hodinki, uh, you know, has gone from, uh, you know, someone who just appreciated a super micro brand that, you know, makes obviously terrific stuff, but really like, not a mass market game, you know. It's it's not it's not Rolex. It's not uh, it's not um, you know Paddock. I mean, these are like your geeky heroes in a way. Whereas Vacheron is a brand you really love. Valerian Ferrier is more of like I said, it's a good way of putting it, like a geeky hero. Uh, so when they did a collaboration with Laurent Ferrier, I thought it was you know super rewarding. You know, I didn't get the same rewarding feeling from the Vacheron, even though the Vacheron was an incredible watch, um, the Hodinkee Vacheron. Uh, but with this one, I really felt like this was a real big moment for Ben. Uh, and I think the execution on it was great. I think it was, you know, made in titanium, right? Uh, not tantalum, I think it was titanium. Um, gorgeous blue dial, partially, if not all, uh, enamel, right? Um, really, really stunning stuff. Uh, my problem with this watch, right, um, was the price tag. And, and it's, it's not because, uh, and mind you, I'm looking at it from, you know, from two points of view, one as a consumer and then one as an investor. I sat here on my computer that day when it came out and it was sensor is enamel and it was uh, titanium and it was 4 p.m. And I sat here and the price tag was $60,000. And I said to myself, what if I buy one? You know, what, really, what if I do it? I buy it, you know, put it on my credit card. You know, I'll be able to hopefully sell it before I have to pay for the credit card statement. You know, uh, you can be able to get content out of it and then, you know, and then, you know, you know ditch it. But then I, I started doing my research, my due diligence, and these watches that aren't Hodinkee, you know, affiliated, you know, trade really in the high 30s and 40s. You know, so really, Hodinkee's demanding a twenty thousand dollar premium. You know, for for their watch, and then like, I do, is there a premium? Yes, I do think there should be a premium, or there is a justifiable premium. But the twenty thousand was a lot. You know, mind you, their premium is the same price that the that the standard model you know is retailed at. But no one buys the standard model retail. People buy the standard model typically, in my experience, uh, you know, secondhand or, or gray market, and they pay like I said in the, in the 30s and 40s. Uh, so that is a big big jump for me to take for a different case metal um, by a brand that uh, although yes is very interesting yes there's great merit still a brand that you probably know you're gonna I, I hate to bring an investment into it but you know the brand is not gonna hold its residual value you know that's kind of that it is Laura Fourier I mean it's not a mass mass market brand you're not gonna have hundred you're not gonna have dozens and certainly not hundreds or thousands of people making offers in your watch. You know, you're gonna have a, a small group of people that uh, that say, okay, this is a watch that I like, and, and yes, maybe it's four guys that are interested in your watch. Uh, so for, for me, it's hard, you know, I, I, don't, I don't have enough money to be able to buy a watch, uh, or I don't have enough money where my mindset about buying watches is entirely separate from residual value. You know, it matters to me, even if I don't give a
I have a beautiful eye, I'll never sell my watch. Uh, it matters to me. You know, I bought a Jeep Wrangler because one, I think it's cool, and two, because they have terrific residual value. You know, and I know that I'm a little nuts like that, and I'm probably a little bit overcome by residual value, but I do think it's important. And once again, I'm not dumping my Jeep, I'm not dumping my Rolex, I'm not dumping my Cartier. I mean, these are, I'm not looking to sell them. Um, but I like the idea of what I pay is what that item is worth. You know, so a $20,000 premium for the Hodinkee, Nah, you know, to me, that's a really tough one. It would have been really impressive if they made this unique, you know, was it one of 15, um, you know, different metal, different dial, everything. And of course, if they could have offered them under retail, which I believe is what they did with MBNF, that would have been special. You know, that would have been really, really interesting. Um, but they didn't, so that's fine. I mean, I don't think that Honiki did a bad job. They sold out, it was a terrific watch, it's interesting. Um, I think that it definitely speaks to, you know, independent collectors, um, and good for Hodinkee. You know, good for Hodinkee. I'm very surprised that the watch didn't sell out quickly. I'm not very surprised. Uh, I, 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 logically, I'm not surprised. Emotionally, I am, because it's a Hodinkee limited edition, and probably one of the best Hodinkee limited editions. But because it doesn't have that mass market reach, and because it was so expensive, it took him hours. You know, Hodinkee can sell out, you know, watches in no time. They sell millions of dollars in watches in minutes. So the fact that this $60,000 really good watch took what? I don't know, six hours? I really don't know. But I looked there four hours later and there were still watches available, which is a lot of time. Okay, so when are the next Jean Rousseau straps, uh, the collaboration with TNH coming? Uh, the next straps are coming probably the first week in November. They are absolutely insane. I'm not gonna give any secrets away. I'm not gonna tell you what they are. Um, but we're gonna, we, we theme them entirely around fall, but the straps are gonna be phenomenal. Of course, you're gonna be able to wear them, you know, all year, um, but there's gonna be elements within the straps uh, that I made in collaboration with my mother and our, our videographer, Anna, uh, our editor, to, uh, to, you know, really kind of incorporate the season, you know? I'm, I'm, with this collaboration with Jean Rousseau, I am getting my inner, like, whatever little inner desire there is for me to be um, a fashion designer. You know, it's kind of funny. I like I like clothing. I like style a lot. So this is a really fun uh, experiment for me uh, to do. So uh, that's it. You guys should really check out our, our collaboration with Jean Rousseau, though. We made a video on it and everything. You guys can look at the link in our uh, description below. Um, the collaboration is incredible. You know, I am very humbled every time I work with Jean Rousseau. Put it this way. I never want someone else to be treating someone better than I'm treating them. You know, and it's just a bragging right. I, I genuinely love customer service. Um, but Jean Rousseau is just amazing. And it's not just necessarily their day-to-day, -day, you know, uh, uh, interactions with consumers that I'm so intrigued by. It's their incredible, uncompromised passion for not only quality, but bringing value. I love to bring value, don't get me wrong, but I sell Datejust, you know, at market value. Jean Rousseau sells their straps significantly below market value. And we do in turn, because we're limited by what they sell them for. So it's crazy. I'm not gonna sell a $3,500 watch for $2,800. And yet Jean Rousseau could easily compete with Hermes as far as quality is concerned, or at least meet somewhere in the middle, because Hermes is blown up by marketing. Um, and yet they don't. Like these straps cost, you know, a fraction, a fourth, you know, of what of what Hermes straps or comparable company straps cost. Uh, so to me, what a freaking dedication to uh, uh, value, you know. So good, good for them. Handmade Italian straps are better. Um, one, quantify that. What does that even mean? What is better? Uh, that's number one. Two, who's handmade Italian straps? That's the ridiculous. That's a ridiculous remark. Uh, and I'm, I'm not attacking you. It's just <laughs> I just don't like the comment. Uh, and 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 third, there are many handmade Italian straps out there that you would be very surprised uh, that they are not handmade or Italian. That's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Ask TNH Live. Uh, again, I am Christian from Theo and Harris, and this was a pleasure. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel below, and please follow us on Instagram, because that is where we kill it with watch content on a daily basis. Posting paddocks, Rolexes, uh, Omegas, Patina, uh, movements, the whole shabam. So that's it. See you guys on Monday.